When you are looking to go bass fishing, by all means, you know, use Google Earth, Bing Maps, that kind of thing. You know, use all the resources online, but nothing actually beats then getting out on the coastline at low water and having a proper look at where you're fishing. And I know a lot of people would look at this and think, no way. But this ground here, extremely shallow, extremely rocky, very snaggy. This is like a larder. Bass love this kind of ground. They can mooch on in looking for blennies, crabs, shrimp, baby mullet, all that kind of thing. And it's the archetypal ground. When I went to Savage Gear and said, please can we develop what are now the gravity sticks, the soft plastics, this is the exact type of ground I had in mind to deal with. You know, 15 years ago, I had hard lures that caught bass, but I could never fish this kind of ground. You think about, think about the weed, when the tide's in, the weed that's sitting here flat now, the weed is up. That's what the bass want. That's what the bait fish want. That's what the, the food is hiding. It's using the rocks for cover. The bass know this, that weed is up and it's, it can be really hard to get a lure through that weed. That's what I want to be. Later on, I'll come back and fish this. I'll be deliberately putting my gravity sticks through that weed. And because of that weedless design, it hides the hook away and lets you fish through virtually anything. Look, I can't see all the sort of the terrain when the tide, the water's covering it, but it really helps to visualize how you know, as human beings, how I kind of, how we think the bass might mooch around. You're either on the flood tide or the ebb tide. You know, I fish a lot of reefs at home, especially a lot of reefs on the ebb tide, the tide going out. But you can visualize this kind of area. That, you know, that weed is going to be sitting up here. To me, that's almost like a highway. It's like, it's almost like a, I call it like a killing channel. The fish can move in or move out. You know, on the ebb tide, the fish could almost, they could almost wait here, the bass, for food that has to clear out because the tide's going out, or on the push tide, that bass is almost kind of mooching, mooching into kill. And, you know, the crabs will come out from underneath the rocks, the prawns will come out, the blennies, the baby mullet. And I, just look, have a, just, just wander around, you know, use your head, use your eyes, and just kind of try and visualize what the bass might want. See, when I first started really getting into bass fishing, I wouldn't have been, firstly, I wouldn't have been at a mark like this with this shallow water. I'd have had to wait for the water to come in. And then I wouldn't have targeted, you see all this weed, how we were talking earlier about all that weed now standing up? That's where I want to be. But when I first started, I didn't have lures, I couldn't get through. You know, you put a hard lure with two sets of treble hooks through this, you spend all day just picking weed off. But because of weedless soft plastics, it's completely opened up ground like this. I am deliberately putting this gravity stick, it's the pulse tail, no belly weight, as subtle as possible. I'm deliberately putting it right through the middle of all the weed. And I haven't snagged up once. That's where the bass are. And I won't snag. I can fish all the ground I never used to be able to fish. And it's really easy. The, you know, the pulse, something like the pulse tail is designed to be whacked out and wound in. You vary the retrieve speeds. And the whole crux of it is, you know, make the lures, make the techniques as simple as possible. And then it's up to you to learn and experiment, find where the bass are and when they're likely to be there feeding. You're going to notice us moving around a lot. That's this style of bass fishing. You know, we're trying to cover as much ground as possible. And I saw a few mullet. I had one follow from a small bass straight away, but we want warmer water here. I mean, I've just put sun cream on. I'm wearing sun gloves. 
because it's starting to warm up, but it's actually gone quite cold again. And these kind of reefy, very weedy, very shallow, bouldery marks definitely like warm water. When you've had proper warmth on those rocks, it definitely helps bring the bass and the mullet in. But it's bass fishing, you know, we've got so many different kinds of ground, so many marks to go and play with. We're going to keep moving until we find fish. This may look almost like nothing, but actually this is quite a unique bass fishing situation, okay? Underneath this water is an evilly snaggy reef, but you see the color, it'd be very, very easy to just dismiss it and say, oh no, storm damage, it's too colored up. But this is not your traditional kind of messed up water. You know when at home, I get those big, big onshore storms and the water goes all filthy and kind of brown. This is not that. This water is actually lovely. What has happened is the tide's been out, big tides. The sun has baked those rocks and that seaweed all day. And that flooding tide, I don't know, does the, does the water potentially react with the seaweed? And it's created color, but it's not it's not a kind of dense color. It's not like storm damage, like I said. You see your lures easily in this kind of color. And often, bass and mullet, they love that warm water coming in on reefs. So don't just dismiss someone like this. It's so easy to rock up, stand on top, look down and go, nah, it's too murky. Don't be too hasty to walk away because it might just be what the bass want. You're probably going to look at this water and think firstly there's too much weed and secondly it's brown but this is warm water i wonder if a lot of people miss this trick i make no mistake i learned it off john quinlan he loves these shallow reefs and warm it's like this warm southerly winds those reefs warm up the water warms up it comes in and it brings the bass and the mullet in I just missed a fish. I got hit then, hooked a fish and it came off. So hopefully there's a few fish here. There's no way around it. You're gonna get a lot of casts where your lure isn't clear. You need that one clear cast and you could be in with a shout. And I'm fishing the pulse tail. The white pulse tail with a belly weight if we get a punch into that breeze and because I love the pulse it's a simple straight retrieve and I'm deliberately fishing my rod tip up not because I'm trying to force the lure up shallow because I'm trying to have the least amount of braid on the surface of the water Try and pick up less weed. So I'll slow my retrieve down a bit to allow for that. Ooh. I just saw a fish cruising past then. I don't know if it was a bass or a mullet. I saw a fish moving right to left. I'm gonna rig up one of the pintails, the smaller ones, with a belly weight hook. But, because this water's very murky, there's a slot that we call the rattle slot that goes behind where the hook is. 
but I'm actually going to put it where I would put the weight spike in the rear end to get as much noise as I can from this lure, as much kind of like clack, 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 to help in this murky water. Oh, I don't even pick that up. I'm going to twitch this lure quite hard to kind of get that dinner bell going. Through the slot in the belly, out into the weedless slot, and that, oh, I love that little click sound. Boom, boom, boom. It's really nice. It's easy to sort of say, oh, you know, I can't be bothered, just carry on fishing, but you know, when you think of something, you do all that kind of thinking at home, you plan for your session, you, know, you may not get to fish a lot. I don't know, I get to fish a lot, but you may not. Um, don't ever think, I can't be bothered. If you think of something, try it. You make the effort, pull away for five minutes, but this may not work. I'll go back to something different, but I like trying stuff. And I think about my fishing, and then I kind of get home and think, well, next time I go, I'll try this, try that. I like a rattle in a soft plastic in murky water. I've got my pintail on now on that two gram belly weight hook and I've got that rattle. I'm going to twitch it quite hard, quite aggressively oh, to really get that thing saying, come and get me. Slow it down to touch. I'm going to get a little bit aggressive on it. As that lure landed, the fish just smashed it. God, I tell you, look, it's not a big bass, but you only think about something, you think, you think, you think, and you do it and it works. Nothing, and I mean nothing in fishing, gives me more pleasure, more satisfaction. Oh. Look, you saw, I know Ben was filming, you saw how quickly that fish hit and the lure hit in the water. And then my barbless hook, out it comes. Oh, it's small, I couldn't care if it's one pound or 10 pounds. That is just, that to me is as good as fishing gets. I just, oh, I love it. Thank you, fish. Look at it, oh. You know how most of the time, a lot of the time, fishing makes us look like absolute amateurs. But just occasionally, just occasionally, you think of something and it works and you kind of feel pretty good. You think, oh yeah, maybe, maybe I know a little bit. And then fishing, you know, then fishing reminds you, it beats you up, brings you back down, and it forces you to learn. That's why, that's why lure fishing for bass has completely taken over my life because I'm forced to learn. The more ground I fish, the more places I fish, the more techniques I adopt, I have to learn all, I can't sand, stick and seal. I like to learn and this just forces me. That's why it's got me so badly. I'll probably crack off now. Here I am banging on about I think I might have half a clue. I'll probably blow my reel, crack off, or drop the next fish. I guarantee it's the kiss of death. Whenever you say on camera, I might be sort of doing all right, you know it's gonna mess up. Oh, why did I say it? Oh, 
You would have thought I'd learn. See what you get necky. Just looking round all the time. Looking for some kind of light. And mullet swirling, bass moving, birds feeding. Divine intervention. I don't care, you just gotta look all the time. in about three different places all at the same time, all close together. You see we've got some breaking white water out here now. So I'm gonna put a seeker on. The ground is hell of a shallow, it's so snaggy. But you know that seeker rises up really shallow and covers me water. The water's much greener here, I just wanna see. I wanna see if I can find a bass in this greener water. Run for effort. Yes. In shallow water, you've really got to get that slacking off the car. Because obviously the seeker on the slack line wants to sink. I need it up and over the rocks and the snags. If you ever, you are ever out on your local coastline and you see water like this over reefs, fish it. Especially when that tide is big, the tide's high, you get these lovely kind of rolling, breaking waves on reefs fishing. You cannot, it should be illegal for a bass angler to walk past stuff like this. I'm gonna try, we're right on the top of the tide. I'm just gonna try clean the water there where the waves are breaking. You see, this is where you wanna remain flexible as a bass angler. We didn't plan this session at all, but we kept an eye obviously on the weather all day. It's been beautiful sunshine. And we went looking for that warm brown water. Remember I said, it's not dirty, it's brown. It's that color from the weed and the rocks. And it was quick. I had one bass, dropped one, one more hit. I had a lovely follow in the waves of a fish, but just keep mobile, keep looking. Don't close your mind off. Just change your plans if you need to, just keep thinking it through and you will find bass.